All right, what's up guys? We're here with Kevin Kowalski. We just built a kiln. Uh, Kevin flew in from Southern California. We had nine people helping us build a kiln. And today we're gonna do a little interview because I thought you guys might be interested in someone that's been in pottery for how long? Over 25 years. 25 years. Kevin's a teacher. He has uh, got a huge influence online. Uh, and he just does some really, really cool stuff. Uh, and I wanna talk to him about that, talk to him about his uh, kiln building workshops that he's been doing. So why don't you just tell us a little bit about your history, why you love pottery, all that stuff. <laughs> the history, we're, we're gonna do the whole thing. The history of how yeah. you came into pottery. <clears throat> I took a class in high school and never looked back. Uh, I'm currently a high school ceramics teacher now, so I just uh, in, I dive into every aspect of clay. And one of them was discovering and learning about the soda firing through Gail Nichols. And I never heard about it in college, never never participated in a soda firing. So I, I realized I had to build my own kiln because you can't just do this in uh, a regular kiln. You have to build a kiln. In my case, I decided to convert a kiln. And I, I kind of took the lead of uh, Steve Davis over at Aardvark Clay. He had built a Kazegama, which is a wind kiln um, using wood ash. And uh, he, he built this incredible kiln. I was very inspired and just said, I think we can do this. I think I can do it. So I, I took apart an old kiln and started uh, messing with it. And it wasn't until I figured out how to line the interior of the kiln uh, with a protective layer to keep the soft brick from deteriorating and also the downdraft capability of the, the converted kiln. Uh, you know, that was, those were the two components that really made the soda kiln uh, what it is today to the point where I'm like, I feel confident that I'm going to repeat the results uh, and get people excited about firing the kiln. And yeah. this is my fifth kiln build. So uh, we're really excited to open this uh, this morning and yeah, kind of peaked. It looks pretty good. Yeah. So the soda kiln, just for you guys that don't know, you know, it's fired with gas, with propane. And then at when it's at a high temperature, we load a mixture in that's baking soda, uh, soda whiting ash. and soda ash. And then that vaporizes and then coats all the pots and interacts with glazes in crazy different ways. And so it's kind of what you call an atmospheric firing. And I don't know what, it's it's a much more unique way. Like every pottery studio in the world has an electric kiln, right? Yes. And they all kind of look similar. The glazes can look similar. Uh, lots of places have gas kilns with soft brick. So that's what we have there. You know, more unique, but not as unique or not as unique as a soda. Uh, and then there's this type of kiln where we built our own. Um, we have unique things happening in the kiln that aren't always happening. And, you know, like Kevin said, he had to figure out how to keep the soft brick from deteriorating because that's what really the soda mixture will just deteriorate. And that's why you can't use a soda, any kiln as a soda kiln, yeah. right? That's yeah. That's all. That's all correct. Yeah. Um, it it was a journey. It's been I think seven years of playing with different uh, layouts and different materials. And uh, I've always been drawn to the results of the soda firing. So that was my my biggest draw to soda firing. And then it was like, well, now I have to figure out how to build this thing. It's not you can't get it from uh, like Scud or someone. You can't just buy a soda. Well, there are soda kilns out there, but this is a way. Uh, an achievable uh, soda kiln that you can put in your backyard and, mm -hmm. and you could use an old shell. It does have some costs. Uh, there's bricks and the mortar and uh, you know things that we we put into the kiln like the burner you, you have to put in uh, some money to, to get it but it will last I would I say over 50 firings uh, yeah. before you have to even think about rebuilding any part of it. Yeah, yeah. If you're inter if you're someone that's interested in building your own kiln, Kevin, you can reach out to Kevin Kowalski uh, Pottery and find him. Uh, he has a great layout. I mean, he was super prepared with the list of things that we needed before he came. Uh, we were lucky enough to offset the cost of the build with people that came and helped it. And so it was awesome a really people. cool, yeah, such a cool community way to bring people in, people that would, you know, hopefully they all want to build their own soda kiln at some point, or they just want to be a part of a build because it's a really cool experience. So we had nine people here. They all have uh, five pots in the kiln. Uh, so the first day was building, second day was glazing and loading, 
third day was firing. That was yesterday. And then today is the unload day. So uh, we did film a lot. So there's gonna be lots of videos coming out about the different aspects of it. But I guess what, the one other thing I wanted to talk about with this build is like, what is it about the soda look for you that makes it unique or that you're drawn to? Yeah. Yeah, when I first discovered soda firing or I didn't discover it, but I learned about it uh, through Gail Nichols. I loved her unique kind of uh, directional surfaces. So the flame carries the soda mixture or the soda vapor and hits the pot on one side and kind of wraps around depositing soda vapor and, and really interacts with whatever's on the piece. So whether it's a, a flashing slip, which is just clay slip, um, or if it's a glaze, <clears throat> it's going to change that part of the, the pot, that surface of the pot and also interact with the glazes. So give it more flux and give it more juice is kind of what we refer to as makes it a juicy surface. Um, also setting my, my pottery, my work apart from other people. Um, it's, you know, not too many people are soda firing. So there's uh, that like aspect of trying to set myself apart from other um, different looks and using similar glazes like floating blue. I put in that kiln and it was like, it became this like, beautiful we were just talking about like this carbon trapped uh cobalt blue love it it's, mm -hmm. it's just gorgeous it, it is predictable uh in the sense that like i know that so, the, this is what's going to happen but is it going to happen every time is it going to happen the exact way that i want that those those challenges are so fun to chase and mm -hmm. it's it's like a um, a challenge each time I fire. And then I also do a technique called uh, mocha diffusion and trying to create an atmospheric look on the piece with those dendritic trees, with my landscape, um, kind of pulling the, the, the blues out of the titanium dioxide that's in the slip. There's so many like layers to what I'm doing. It, it's a beautiful challenge and I love you know chasing that mm -hmm. uh, and excited to show other people really the reason why I'm building all the other kilns is so that you're gonna use Mako glazes. you're gonna try uh, your own glazes your own your own techniques your own clays and I want to see what you come up with and how you are layering things and uh, it's it's we I think we were joking about the tagline like we build the kiln to build the community mm -hmm. so it's really about that community that comes helps build and uh, develops um, more to the the soda firing and the, this type of fire yeah yeah and speaking of that if you are interested we are also going to be doing more soda firing workshops so if you're interested in firing in this kiln uh, we will maybe once a month as as much as you could come here bring up to eight to ten pieces fire with us unload with us and then you get those pieces uh, back as well so but we'll be setting up some days for that excited to see what we pull out of this yeah, guy yeah us too let's walk around and just talk about it really quick we had uh, everyone involved in the build sign a brick so that they were all part of the foundation of this kiln. All right, there's a lot of actual maintenance to the kiln. So uh, we are putting in a mixture into this hole here, uh, like we talked about the, the soda material. And so that kind of gets messy around the kiln, but it's a pretty quick cleanup with a shop vac and maybe a shovel and just clean it up. Um, so we're entering, so this is where the, the heat source is here with a burner uh, created and built by Ward Burner. And then this hole here is plugged up most of the time by a brick. But when we are entering the soda kiln, and it'll probably flash to a, yep. a video of that happening, but we dump it into the, the firebox. Um, then it vaporizes, carries through all the wear, and then the heat goes down through the, the flue and then out the chimney. And then we built this awesome damper system uh, just by cutting a few bricks and a piece of angle iron. And we pretty much had it open to one, two max, uh, which allows air to flow and the gas to escape. We also built this chimney a little bit higher so the gases aren't flowing in our face, but you had already broken it down for, uh, for storage later. But this build, this kiln, um, it, there's there's people like William Baker that helped 
kind of pioneer this type of conversion kiln, uh, I just kind of put two elements together. So the protective layer on the inside and then kind of this downdraft technology, which is not anything that I created, but definitely something that was helpful to create an even temperature from the top to the bottom. And uh, we're also firing a cone five, six, um, maybe six and a half at the top. It was a little hotter, yeah. uh, but like great, great surfaces at cone five, six uh, in a soda kiln. And it's, it's a, achievable, it's a, it, you, can, you can do it. I just wanna show them just a little sneak peek of oh, what, yeah. sure. just like, cause I know that we're pumped to get in here. It's a little hot, so we're not opening it up like crazy, but some of these pieces in here, this was my, yeah, this was one of my mugs that I did that. This is oh, it, guys. This so is why good. we do it. So all this carbon trapping around the edge is gorgeous. Let me get the, the Look at light. Like, that color right there, like that purple. Like, I should, yeah. I should pull out what exactly that was. Yeah, it's okay because it's, it's all going to be, you're going to be trying so many combinations, but just getting this carbon trapping around here with the extra soda vapor. So this is a very juicy surface. And uh, I mean, that's so unique and so special that uh, you got to charge over a thousand dollars for that. <laughs> <laughs> so it's for auction right now. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Oh yeah. Oh my gosh. It's, it's actually flexed and Oh, look at that gorgeous black carbon trap.